what I'm getting out of this, the, the advice for foreigners listening to this episode, learn the different bones of your body because you never know when you're going to have to tell the doctor that you broke your schlüsselbein. You just don't know. Genau. Yes. <laughs> It's the Germany Experience, the podcast about life in Germany as seen through the eyes of outsiders. I'm your host, Sean. Visit the website, thegermanyexperience.de and email me. I love to get your emails. Info at thegermanyexperience.de. You can ask me questions. You can tell me, give me feedback about the show. Anything you want. I like to chat. Uh, send me an email. Don't forget the Welcome to Germany Summit 2022 is happening on 29th of September from one o'clock in the afternoon, uh, Central European time, of course to uh, 7 p.m. in the evening. There are a lot of great topics, and my slot is at 6 p.m., so come and listen. It's free to sign up. If you want to hear more about uh, what the summit is about and you haven't listened yet, I released a special episode talking about it uh, on Sunday, so go and take a listen to that if you haven't yet. And the great thing about it is that it's free. You'll get a lot of insights from a lot of cool speakers, and you'll have the chance to ask each speaker some questions afterwards. So if you want to register, link is in the show notes. So my guest this week is someone who has already left Germany. It's Sadaf, who is originally from Pakistan, and she was here in Germany for a semester of studying. When she was on a trip to Milan, she was involved in a car accident, and she recounts the story of her ordeal and of her recovery afterwards. Uh, she also talks about her feelings about Germany here is Sadaf. Sadaf, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Sean. I'm very happy to be here. Yes, and I'm 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 looking forward to our chat. I think uh, we've been in touch. You, how did you? How did we get in touch again? I think you mailed me, if I'm remembering correctly. Yes, that is correct. I reached out to you uh, because I found your podcast on um, a few articles. Actually, I was Ooh. doing some research about um, expats in Germany and what's the best pod podcast to listen to, and uh, yours came on the very top on a couple of articles. Very this is you. You could have told me this before, set up. This is very. <laughs> I like to hear this kind of stuff. Where was that in the prep call? <laughs> yeah, like that's actually how I found you, and I was so oh. intrigued because I also heard uh, some of your interviews, and I really liked it. And I thought, why not? I should definitely reach out to Sean. He looks. He sounds very interesting. Oh well, that's. I, I'm very glad you did because you have got a very, uh, very interesting story from what I've already heard from what you told me in uh, the, the emails, and we've we've had a, a discussion as well. Uh, I know that your story is very interesting, but before we get into all of that, tell me uh, your background, uh, a bit about who you are and where you're from. So I was born and raised in Karachi, uh, which is the financial hub of Pakistan. I was there until 2019, and then in 2019, I moved to Canada to pursue my further uh, education, and I'm currently reading political science and history at Memorial University of Newfoundland. Uh, so in Canada, I live in uh, St. John's, which is the capital of Newfoundland, which is the most eastern part of Canada. Uh, and I also, well, mostly I've lived in Toronto uh, because my sister lives there and I visit her during holidays and during unforeseen circumstances like a global pandemic. Mm. Uh, so I, uh, I've been in Toronto as well. And uh, then I managed to make my way to Berlin uh, through my university, uh, actually, uh, because I uh, wanted to uh, go to a foreign exchange semester. And Germany just happened to be the perfect place to do that. And that's how I managed to make it to Berlin. Wow. So you're here temporarily, I, I guess. Like, how long is yes. that going to last? That's right. So I've been living here for half a year. And mm -hmm. uh, now it is coming to an end. Okay. So so I guess you're in Germany because of specifically because of the studies. Was there anything else that drew you to Germany uh, other than the studying? Yes, I have various reasons why I picked Germany. Uh, so firstly, I'm very fond of German history. I started reading German history when I was 17, and it just intrigued me very much because I... 
uh, read about uh, the 17th century, the, the German unification, um, you know, all of the Prussian history. Then I also read about the, the Holocaust. I read about the, um, the Cold War and, you know, j- just reading about the, things like the Berlin Wall and then watching a lot of uh, movies like uh, The Pianist, um, mm. which was, well, it was based in Poland, but it was yeah. actually shot in uh, Babelsberg. And that's actually where I okay. live. Um, oh, really? So that's, uh, yeah, so that's also uh, what really intrigued me to Germany. And then another reason for me uh, was uh, the German architecture. <clears throat> so Germany does have a very long, rich and diverse history, and it has a wide range of architecture from Baroque and classical, modern, Gothic and Renaissance. So, um, and, you know, I, I have traveled across Germany to a few places and I have spotted this variety in architecture, which uh, is very, very pleasing uh, to uh, witness. Uh, yeah. In fact, today only I visited uh, the Charlottenburg Palace, and my God, that is a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, okay. So yeah, and uh, for me, it was also the language. Since German is uh, the most widely spoken native language in Europe, uh, I, I really wanted to explore it and mm-hmm. learn it. So yeah. Well, there's there's a lot that you said there because I I think it, I I'm, I was also fascinated. I am I am still fascinated by German history because it's just had such a dramatic history. I I, don't, I know a lot of countries that had a lot of things going on, but Germany just seemed to have a lot more uh, dramatic stuff happening, and it, it is interesting. And I also think uh, sometimes I wish I understood more about architecture uh, because because we're surrounded by such beautiful architecture in Germany, and I unfortunately must admit I don't. Uh, understand too much or don't always know what I'm looking at when I'm looking at architecture. I can only admire it sort of as a layman, like, okay, that that's pretty, that's a pretty facade, I guess. Uh, so I've often wished that I could uh, understand more about architecture because I think it just enriches the experience, right? Yeah, actually, my love for architecture started in Germany. So mm. for me also before, I mean, I have been very curious to travel and visit beautiful places. Uh, but Often when I would look at pictures, I would think, yeah, that that is pretty. But then I came to Germany and I developed this love for architecture, for reading and understanding architecture, and also for interior design. Like I just have this thing for visiting places and then just trying to understand, okay, uh, where is this, you know, architectural piece from? Why was this building created? What's the history behind it? What's the just the designing technique? And mm-hmm. I also try to take inspiration because I would love to apply that in my own um, apartment. Um, so yeah, like uh, thank you, Germany, for that. <laughs> Very cool. Um, the other thing that we haven't mentioned yet is that you're also a singer. Uh, yeah, so I've been singing all my life. I started singing when I was six years old. And I've just always been very passionate about music. I love to dance as well. So I have been singing and I enjoy performing live very much. So I frequently perform live and uh, I I have been performing in Toronto. And I also performed yesterday for the first time in Berlin. Uh, So so that was really fun. Uh, But yeah, and um, I have been working on some original material. I've been writing some songs because... Uh, of my trip in Germany so far, I've been feeling so inspired. So I do have uh, some exciting things coming up. Very cool. Uh, the other thing that uh, a lot of foreigners like about Germany is it offers them a chance to travel. Have you had a chance to do any traveling around of your own? Yes, uh, I actually visited five or six countries uh, it, by by coming here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this summer alone, I, I went to six countries. Uh, so, uh, I, I've been to the Czech Republic. I went to Prague and, uh, it was so beautiful. I, I love Prague. It's like a yes. Baroque fairy tale, yeah. uh, so much architecture. <laughs> and, uh, I've been to, uh, Italy. So Italy is my favorite country. I I've been there. I went to Sweden and Norway. I've mm-hmm. also been to Switzerland and I've been to a little bit of Austria. Wow, that's amazing. That's really yeah. that's really cool. Yeah, it's a, it's it's been a very very beautiful journey full of uh, ups and downs. 
Yes, and I, of course, I, being a bit of a, a magnet for drama, I do like to talk about the the downs, but not because because I uh, like the, the fact that you went through downs, because obviously I don't. But something that I've discovered on the podcast is it's always good for for the listeners to hear. Like there are other people that have have a rough uh, times uh, adapting to Germany or, or go through rough times while they're in Germany. Now, when we first started talking. Uh, something you something you told me about was a story that happened while you were traveling and this 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 was this led to quite a lot of uh, difficulties in your life so maybe you want to uh, just explain what what happened uh yeah so um basically what happened was uh when i went to italy uh i was visiting milan uh with my sister and milan happens to be my favorite city Uh, so I went there for two days, and the last day I was uh, I had to fly back to Berlin, and my flight was at six in the morning, mm -hmm. and uh, my sister was flying back to Toronto, and her flight was uh, on the next day. So we parted our ways uh, at the hotel, and uh, initially that day we were visiting Lake Como. And uh, it was a very beautiful day and I, I just had a lot of fun with my sister and then I was saying goodbye to her and I was also very tired and I just mm -hmm. remember wanting to uh, return to Berlin and just sleep all day and relax and get some rest. Uh, so right. I was very much looking forward to that. So basically what happened was that uh, that night uh, there was a taxi strike going on in Milan. So I was oh, unable to bad timing, get a right? cab. Yeah, to tell me about it. So <laughs> I was unable to find a cab to the airport and I was uh, wanting to take the public transport, but I was also feeling a bit nervous about that because it was mm -hmm. I, I had to leave at four in the morning. So I wasn't very sure, you know, whether I should go alone Yeah. And I had to take like a few trains to get to the airport. So then I, you know, we came back from Como and then it was 12 a.m. And my sister just hit the hay and I was next to her and I was thinking, okay, you know what? Even though there is a taxi strike going on, I'm going to do some research and I'm going to try to find out some kind of a cab. And I did. Uh, I, I did find this app and I booked a cab in advance for 4 a.m., And I was very happy because I am a very organized person. So okay. I, I just felt very much at peace. Yes, there's a cab coming. And then I decided to uh, get some sleep for like, what, one hour. Oh, I slept and then I wake up and I'm still very, very exhausted. But I get dressed and I... Uh, that day I, I wrote my sister these letters like I wrote her these two goodbye letters saying mm -hmm. oh thank you for visiting me and I love you so much and I'll miss you so much and goodbye <laughs> and then I left and uh, I went downstairs in the hotel lobby and I saw that there was a cab that uh, someone else took and I thought oh, oh I, I guess someone else uh, is also going somewhere at this time mm -hmm. And turns out that was my cab and someone took my, oh my cab God. because I saw that ride had started on my phone. So me being the organized person and knowing that I have work the next day and uh, I, I'm very sleepy and exhausted, I, I do get stressed out a bit. And yeah, sure. Kind of, yeah, and I, and I start talking to the receptionist uh, in the lobby and I tell him, who was that? Who took my cab? What's going on? Find me something, please, like help me. Yeah, and uh, were, were you just, freaking out? Like, were, like, what is your state, your your physical state here? Are you screaming at this point, or oh, are you still pretty God. calm? <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, I was kind of yelling. <laughs> I, I fully understand. It's like, that's where the stress levels go from zero to a hundred, and you it's just it's just crazy. And and the, the frustrating thing is, you organized that cab, and somebody just took it. Exactly, and somebody just took it while I was standing right in front of it. Oh, God. And I, I was admittedly furious. So yes. I was kind of taking it out on the hotel receptionist, <laughs> but um, I, I was still nice to him, but, but still like he, he, he was nice enough to understand and he offers me water and he's, he goes out in the streets of Milan and he's yelling and screaming taxi, you know, taxi, get her a taxi, somebody. And no one is responding. Like oh, this is already totally this, 
this is already a nightmare scenario, by the way. Yeah. This is, this is like, this is like causing my anxieties to rise. Yes, it was terrible. I was freaking out. My flight was yeah. in two hours and there was no cab. So then I texted my sister and she was awake. She was checking up on me and she happens to find an Uber. And it was uh, crazy because we had been looking for an Uber the whole time during our trip, but we never got one. Mm -hmm. So she found me one at that time. And I waited for that Uber for like 20 to 30 minutes. And as soon as it arrived, I just got in. And it was a 15 minute drive to the airport. So I'm in the Uber and sitting on the right side. And I'm very happy. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, yes, I made it. I'm now going mm-hmm. back to Berlin. I'm going to get some sleep. Yeah. And I remember being in a very good mood. Uh, there was a song playing on the radio. I also shazammed it and sent it to a friend. And mm-hmm. the song was uh, Rise by Purple Disco Machine. Um, okay. Yeah, it's, it, it, is a, it, it is one of my favorite songs now. But uh, okay. Yeah, and then uh, I remember making a video of the whole scene and then suddenly I just don't remember anything. I just remember waking up on my left side. I had fallen down on the car seat and I'm in immense pain and I wake up slowly and my brain quickly tells me, you've been in a car accident. Oh my God. And this is when my life took a 180 right there, right in that moment. And I wake, uh, I get up and I'm thinking, okay, I'm still in Milan. I've been in, I've been in a car accident and God, this is painful. Like, where's that pain coming from? This hurts. I was in so, so much pain and I don't remember so much, but I just remember looking around and uh, the doors of my car, they're, non-existent at this point the windshield is broken there's no one in the car and I glance outside the driver is standing and he's making calls uh, to the paramedics and I see a few people on the streets talking about my accident and I'm just crying and I'm yelling please don't leave me please help me don't Uh, leave me I'm all alone and my speaking also so terrifying Yes, it was uh, the most traumatic experience of my life. And I remember they were not understanding me because Italians don't speak English that much. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was very difficult for me to communicate with them. And even when I was asking for help, they were not understanding. I remember asking for my phone to make a call, but no one was understanding me. And then somewhere out of nowhere, my phone just fell down, like fell onto the, the... the floor of the car uh, and I, I reached out to get it. And then I turned my data on and I contact my sister and she okay. was tracking my Uber. So she already had an idea that my car had oh, yeah. stopped. She was right. freaking out. Yeah. And she tells me that she's going to be there no matter what. And then, yeah, I, I also remember like this woman came and she was telling me to breathe in and breathe out. And I just looked at her like, like she was some light of hope or something like she's going to yeah. help me. And then the paramedics arrived and I just asked one of them to hold my hand tightly and he did. And it was just so calming. Like one thing I learned about myself in that experience is that when I'm very, very scared, I just need someone to hold my hand. I I don't need to talk. I I don't need to cry. I just need a hand to hold on to. And uh, that's exactly what this guy did. Um, And then they like, they strapped me in, in one position And the next moment I know I'm not really seeing any sights in Milan. All I'm seeing is the sky and like, because I'm being transported onto the the stretcher. So Mm -hmm. I I can only see the sky. I can only see the ambulance rooftop and then I can see the hospital room and la la la. So it, it was very traumatic. And then the police interviewed me, the paramedics interviewed me and For me, it was very difficult because I was just in complete denial. I was thinking, I have been vacationing for a while. I've been traveling and studying and and I'm I'm having a really good time. And now suddenly I'm in an ambulance and I've never imagined myself to be in this situation. So that was very difficult for my brain to register. Um, 
But yes, I do remember talking to the paramedic about myself and he tried to calm me down and we kind of get into a conversation about music and Avicii and <laughs> okay. so, yeah. And uh, yeah, then I was in the hospital and then stuck in Milan for the next two weeks. I mean, this is the, the, I mean, this is a bad thing that could happen in Germany as well. Like if someone, a foreigner that's here is in an accident, because of course the, the thing about being a foreigner in, in Europe is that you no, don't necessarily have a support system nearby or, or, or family. I guess you were lucky that your sister was still in Milan at the time, but it's, it's a really tough thing to happen, but this was not happening to you in the in the country that you're, you're you're living in for the time being it's happening in another country so it's even it's sort of even more far removed from any sort of support system that you might have did your sister stay the whole time that you were in the hospital in milan yes uh, certainly she wouldn't let me go at all uh, oh, and amazing. even to this day she tells me if you ever go back to milan i'm going back with you you're not going to be alone <laughs> <laughs> so she stayed with me she canceled her flight uh, to toronto and uh, she was there uh, with me the whole time uh, and then she was also making runs to the police station and the lawyer mm. and dealing with the whole scenario and uh, I-, I believe she also saw a picture of the car uh both the cars and she told okay. me that she nearly fainted because it was so scary. Really? Uh, so yes, it was a very uh, challenging experience because I, I still know a little bit about how to get around in Germany, uh, but I've been in Italy uh, only a few times. And this mm. was the second time that I, I, I went to Milan and I, I still wasn't very familiar with, sure. you know, like the healthcare system. Like, I, I don't know how that works. Yeah. So it, it was very, very difficult. So, and, and how long were you in the hospital in Milan and how was it, what, what was the next step after that? So I was in the hospital for a day. Uh, the doctor okay. discharged me, even though I felt that I wasn't ready to be, to be discharged. Right. Um, And then we went back to the hotel, we extended it, we moved hotels, but uh, my my sister did take a lot of good care of me. And uh, yeah, like uh, there there was also a time like the the first weekend when I was discharged, I was uh, in a lot of pain because my bone would be constantly moving and I really didn't. Yeah, I know. Which bone was this? what, what What actually happened? You broke a bone somewhere. Yes, this was my left collarbone. I broke it in two places. Yeah, and and the doctor just comes to me. So first they make me wait. First they take a lot of my tests and x-rays, and then they make me wait six hours in the hospital. And they say the doctor's on his way. And after six hours, the doctor walks in and he goes, oh, you might have to either get a surgery or you have to wear a brace for a month. Mm. And... He's very calm about this. Yeah. And yeah, and I just remember crying like yeah. like a baby. And he goes, oh, just calm down. It's okay. You're going to be fine. And I tell him, but I have so many plans for July. What are you talking <laughs> about? Like what? I just, I, I have limited time here. I, I, I have to do some things. And he's yeah. just like, well, now, you know, you have to get a surgery or wear a brace and Mm. I was so scared and then he also tells me to take that decision within one hour uh oh my goodness so you have to literally decide between surgery and would and wearing a brace would the surgery have been in Milan uh yeah so he actually said that the surgery can be in Milan uh or it can also be in Germany but I would have preferred uh for it to be in Milan because I was in no a condition to travel. Uh, right. But I did choose the brace because I was not ready for a surgery. Because uh, mm-hmm. he also mentioned that it would have to be two surgeries, one to put these metal plates in my collarbone and then one to okay. remove those plates after like six months. And yeah. no way in hell am I getting two surgeries. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, but, but, but yeah, we, we stayed there for two weeks and, uh, then right after that, we decided to fly back home to Pakistan and, uh, this happened after three years. Like I, I didn't visit home ever since I flew out of there. So I visited Mm -hmm. Pakistan and, uh, that was also quite an experience. I I was there for three weeks, just recovering and being with my family and, um, it, it was great. Yeah. So I guess something good came out of it. How was it okay to fly with 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 the with the bone like it was? 
or did uh, it yeah yeah it, it 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 was okay because uh the the airline staff actually they were very hospitable so uh they were looking after me and my sister was also there so it was uh, i mean it, it was a 10 hour journey with a stopover and i was constantly wearing a brace and walking slowly mm. but uh luckily it it was a nice experience okay yeah that's that that's at least something good that's come out of it and i think it's the best time to be near family is after something like that as you're recovering and and, and getting over the trauma of the whole thing yeah that's absolutely true i mean mm. i think uh, in a way i still haven't completely processed it because there's so yeah. much that's happened over the summer and especially with the car accident it's just been it's been a whirlwind like it's mm, it's mm. just been so crazy and uh, yeah like I but but it is true that being closer to my family was very special like my mom was there my other sister was there and they were extremely supportive like they were constantly feeding me <laughs> getting me out of bed helping me sleep and uh, yeah, just just taking care of me. That that was very nice. Yeah. Um, so so there there you were in pa- Pakistan for three weeks, I think you said, and then the plan was to come back to Germany, uh, and and that's what you did. What was that like, leaving Pakistan and heading back to Germany? <laughs> so uh, yeah, I I really wanted to go back to Germany because I did come here on a foreign exchange semester, and I really wanted to finish that. So there Mm. were even questions like, uh, what if you don't go back? What if you just stay in Pakistan until you fully recover? Because my recovery time um, was two months and uh, it it has been extended to six months. Mm. Um, But but to wear the brace, it it was two months. So it was still a very fresh uh, injury. Mm -hmm. And... uh, I wasn't very sure if I should go back to Pakistan or if I should go back to Canada or if I should go back to Germany. But uh, truth be told, my heart was in Germany. And I just thought, you know, I I think if I go back there, I can do it because I I have that drive. I have the determination and I think I can make it work. So I contacted uh, my university uh, in Potsdam and I told them about everything and they were very supportive. They said, They they found me a doctor. They uh, sent me a car to pick me up at the airport. Wow. And uh, yeah, they they were very supportive. So that support really helped me knowing that, okay, if something goes south, I can always go to my university and I can tell them, hey, this is the problem and I I need your help. Um, So that's one thing that really uh, encouraged me to go there with confidence. And I did. Mm -hmm. And even though my mom was very nervous about it, she still let me do it. Uh, so that that was also very special. Um, but yeah, I, I did uh, end up coming back to Berlin after three weeks. And so, so what was that like coming back? Was, how, how incapacitated were you by the injury during this recovery time? Could you still do normal things or, or was it a case of you, you had to stay indoors? So for a while, maybe for the first week, I did try to stay indoors a bit. Uh, cooking was difficult because mm. I couldn't really use um, my left arm that much. I had to keep it resting. Uh, but but I did still manage to cook a bit. Um, mm-hmm. I also had to take buses uh, to the doctor. Um, luckily, he is 10 minutes away from me, but, but I still had to uh, make that journey without someone coming with me. And mm-hmm. Whenever I would get an x-ray over here alone, it it did make me very nervous because I was looking at the broken bone and I would, you know, the, the first thought that would come in my mind would be, I don't really have anyone next to me right now to share this with. So this yeah, is a bit difficult, yeah. but I would yeah. constantly be uh, texting my family and updating them about that. That was very yeah. nice, but still yeah. um, I, I did manage to do those things alone and then coming back to my apartment and just thinking, you know, like, yeah, like you, you have to get by. Uh, but, but I do think that it was very much worth it because I did manage to, I wore the brace for, I think three weeks while I was in Berlin and mm-hmm. I did manage to uh, take some trains and then, and, and go sightseeing and, like I, I visited Sicilian Hof in Potsdam, 
I also went to a concert. <laughs> uh, and it's just because I, I really, really wanted to. So yeah. it, it was worth it. Well, at least you could still move around and do those things because I think that keeps that helps keep your spirits up uh, and 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 going on. But but uh, what about friends and things like that? Because I, I should imagine with a short term stay, you might not have a large circle of friends. Did you have friends around that could help you uh, with that kind of stuff as well? Yeah. So uh, when I first came here, I met uh, some very amazing people, and I did make some very nice friends. Uh, in fact, one of them also came to pick me up from the airport. Uh, she is a very dear friend of mine. And the, the sad part is that I came back here at the end of July, and that's when the semester was ending. And mm. this was also when most of my friends were flying back home or flying back to um, where they originally come from in Germany. So most of them were doing that. So when I came back, oh, yeah. Whenever I was going to see a friend, I was basically going to say goodbye. Uh, so I met a bunch of people just to say goodbye to them. And that was very sad because I thought I, I really wanted to do certain things with these people in yeah. July. In fact, I, I had a few plans of, of visiting uh, Perucaville in July with, with a bunch of friends and mm -hmm. that didn't happen. So I was very, very sad about that. So I was also dealing with this feeling of loss after my accident. Uh, just, you know, like coming back and then saying goodbye to friends and then managing things alone. That that was hard. Yeah. I mean, you sound like you're a, a, a positive person for, just from talking to you and a little bit that I've spoken to you already. What I can hear is that you you kind of have a positive outlook. You're going through this, <laughs> this, uh, this kind of this hard stuff, but you still want to get out. You want to see sites, which I think is all very, uh, it's all very, obviously very good. Um, but what was your mental state at this time, uh, being back in Germany, being away from family, saying goodbye to friends, and also maybe dealing with some pain, I, I should imagine? What was your overall mental state at the time? It's been very mixed. Um, at that mm -hmm. time, it was very mixed. And I would say that it still is because I still haven't processed this summer. Um, like I said before, like I have found myself in moments where I'm feeling very sad about many loss that, losses that I've experienced so far, because you are right. Uh, you do tend to lose a lot of foreigner friends because I, I do have a bunch of friends all over the world, uh, including a, in Germany. So I, I do have these moments where, for example, if I'm sitting on a train and I'm going to a nice place, I will suddenly just realize, oh, wait, I, that person isn't really a part of my life anymore. Mm -hmm. And I'll probably never see them again. And then there's this other feeling of happiness and gratitude, like, wow, you know, I'm, I'm getting to experience this part of Europe or uh, th this is a very exciting part of my life, uh, mm -hmm. an exciting chapter of my life. And I, I feel really happy about that. Uh, so I, I would say that my mental state has been quite mixed. Yeah, I, 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 can, Im I can imagine that. Something else that I wanted to come back to, uh, the, uh, a question that I have for you about uh, dealing with German doctors. How is your German, by the way? Um, so I would say beginner level. Uh, I, I'm still learning it, but uh, it's it's very much A1.1. Wow. So how was that dealing with German doctors? Did you Are you able to find a lot of English doctors in Germany or is it, is it a case of trying to figure your way through reports and understand what they're, what they're saying? It was actually very difficult. At first, uh, I had to contact my university and I had to ask them to specifically find an English speaking doctor. Uh, so they did help me with that. And uh, I also remember calling up my insurance company and telling them like, hey, I've been in a car crash and I broke my collarbone. And then they go, uh, what? <laughs> and, and, and I tell oh them, uh, I, I translate it on Google and I say, shoes will buy. <laughs> Yeah, I was then, just about to say, I don't know what collarbone is. Now that you're mentioning it, I'm like, <laughs> I wouldn't even know what to call a collarbone in German. So you say it's a Schlüsselbein. Yes, a Schlüsselbein. Okay. Yeah, that. Uh, yeah, and, and that's basically, I have used that word more than collarbone <laughs> at this point. <laughs> so, it's now a Schlüsselbein for you. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, exactly. And danke. <laughs> and danke. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and I think uh, I think we can offer some advice to people. Like it's, uh, what I'm getting out of this, the, the advice for foreigners listening to this episode, learn the different bones of your body because you never know when you're going to have to tell the doctor <laughs> that you broke your schlüssel bite. You just don't know. You know, yes. <laughs> that is very true. Um, but my doctor is actually amazing. Well, at first, uh, the the hospital that I went to, so this is in Potsdam. It's in Babelsberg. And Potsdam is uh, just 30 minutes away from Berlin. So I went here and, and at first uh, the receptionist didn't speak English. So I had to wait for an English speaking nurse to come in. And I waited like 30 minutes for that. Oh my God. Uh, and, and then she came and then I, I communicated with her. And luckily my doctor also speaks English uh, here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was very nice. Um, so yeah, I, I would say that personally my experience with, the healthcare over here has been good so far, uh, although it's been a bit difficult with the insurance company, but uh, the hospital itself has been very nice. Okay. You're difficult with the insurance company because of the language barrier or is, have there been other difficulties? Uh, mostly the language barrier, yes. Mm-hmm. Like uh, they, yeah. they sometimes have a hard time understanding what you want when, when you speak English. Yes. Yes, which is which is interesting because everything else, like the medic, you'll be able to find English speaking doctors, you can whatever. But when it comes to the medical insurance, you deal with whoever is on the other end of the phone. There, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. a, a, some type, a lot of them. I think there are some health insurances that do have specifically English services for people who don't speak German. But generally, uh, you're gonna just probably end up dealing with them in German. So yeah, that's that's yes. that's rough. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been like that. Wow, so that that is a, a tough time. So in uh, in total, how how long have you been in Germany at, right as of now? So I would say I've been here for seven months in seven total. Months. Time is probably coming up, uh, coming to an end. I can't remember how long you said you had left. When are you leaving exactly? Uh, so I'm actually leaving next week. Next week. Yes, I'm leaving next oh week. It's, <laughs> it makes so me. Soon. <laughs> I know it, it makes me very sad, but. Yes, yeah. it's happening. So, so when this episode comes out, which is next week as of the time of recording this, you're probably, probably going to have left Germany. So, yeah, you, you said you've got some bittersweet feelings about that. And in the beginning of the uh, interview, you said something about when you come back to Germany. So, obviously, your German journey is not over from what from what I was hearing from you. Like, what are your what what are your uh, thoughts of Germany, and what are your plans for it in your future? Well. I love Germany, that's for sure. I really like Berlin. I've also been to Dresden. I've been to Hamburg. And I I just think that the energy here, the people, the culture, it's just very, it's been very fun. Yes, it's been hard. It's not always colorful. Um, But I think that it is worth it because I have very much enjoyed my time here. I have some very beautiful memories here and I, I just really like it. And mm. I, I hope to come back here in the future. Wow. And it's, it's always interesting for me to hear things like that, especially when someone has a story like you have, it could easily have been that what, that what you experienced uh, would have colored your view of, of Germany would have changed your entire experience. You were robbed of some time as it was of the plans that you wanted to do, but also just just the, the general thing could have uh, could have ended up coloring your your stay negatively. But you still you still have such a uh, positive view of Germany, and in, in fact, enough to come back. So I think that's pretty cool. Yes, uh, that is certainly true, and, and I think that even though I, I did have a few uh, downs this summer, I, I do think that I also made some very good memories here that make up for that. Yeah. Uh, so it, it it was definitely worth it. Yeah. And I guess in these things, the hardships are also part of the learning process of figuring, figuring yourself out. Like you said, you learned some things about yourself that you you didn't necessarily know otherwise. So I think it's all, it's all part of it. So yeah. What, uh, what a story uh, that you have and uh, set up. I just want to say thank you so much for your honesty and your openness in sharing it. I know that some, it might not be that easy to talk about. So I really appreciate you coming on the podcast and telling, uh, telling your story. Oh, th- thank you so much for having me on your podcast, Sean. It's been such an honor and I've had so much fun and I've had a really nice time chatting with you. So once again, thank you so much. And that's it for this week. 
Stay tuned next week for another guest, as usual, episode in your feeds every Wednesday. And hey, if you've made it this far, it means you really like the podcast. So I want to tell you something. You can either go and review this podcast on whichever pod, uh, podcast listening app you listen to podcasts on, or you can tell someone about the podcast. Tell a friend. Tell a, tell a foreigner. If you know some foreigners that might benefit from the podcast, tell them. Spread the word. Every little bit helps. Thanks for listening. Speak to you again next week. Auf Wiedersehen.